Hello, hello! David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games. Welcome to the stream, everyone! We got quite a few people coming in early today, which is awesome. I love watching the characters build up and seeing them have a little conversation. Who have we got? We've got Nyanel, who is wearing the same purple jumpsuit as me. We appear to have some different uh, other overlays. Nyanel's got a sweet beard. I wish my character had a sweet beard. We've got AJ Slay, an orc with a beard rocking a dress. We've got Bronx Taco and uh, it was DJ Kosher. Yeah, there he is with the same staff. I don't know if you guys are part of the same Wizards Guild or something. Uh, and I like, uh, uh, well, I just, yeah, I like, I like both your characters. Hey, Logan, welcome to the stream. Uh, Logan is saying lots of things. I just pushed a chest spawn update to main. I added some areas that made spawning out of the room super simple now, but it's certainly more playable than it was. Cool. So Logan, uh, Devlog Logan, as it, as he is known on the overlay. <laughs> Uh, is uh, one of my partners on the um, Good o Wild Jam, one of the members of my team. Ooh, someone else snuck in. Tim Day, welcome to the stream. Uh, and uh, he has been working on getting the chests more usable. We'll, we'll pull it down and we'll, we'll check it out on stream. Um, as soon as I remember the keys I have to press to frobulate the overlay here. Okay, that's one of them. No, no. Oh, I went, I've gone backwards. Okay, uh, time... Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> I don't know how I forget this every time. Uh, all right. So this overlay, by the way, is a Godot game that we built in um, on stream last summer. And uh, all the code is open source if you want to use a similar thing for your own streams. All right. So theoretically, the stream overlay should be actually overlaying. Um, let me see what folks are saying. Tim Day. In in Australia, it's very late. <laughs> hey, the clean, welcome to the stream. You've got is that like a, a like a toga going on? Is your character wearing a toga? Quite possibly, with some pants. Just like the what is it? Is there a name for that sort of like just upper body toga looking thing? I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, so how's everybody doing? Oh, I didn't notice that Logan's got like a huge axe and like a, a big beard. Is anyone else participating in the Godot Wild Jam number 45? Uh, it's been a long time since I have done a uh, game jam. But absolutely my favorite game jam is the Godot Wild Jam. And uh, this uh, month, uh, the theme is Underground. And then some other... Wild cards include a scenic view of your character, change visually after death, make a trade that you'll regret to deal with the devil. We really haven't done any of the wild cards in our game. Hey, Let's Tote. Welcome to the stream. You're halfway, halfway through uh, your game. Is that what you're saying for the, for, the, for the jam? All right, so Logan said he made some changes to, um, to chest stuff. Let me make sure I'm on the main branch. Let's check out uh, what that is. Let's play the game so I can show you guys what we're making. Um, and yeah, I'm always excited to hear about your guys' project updates. So if you have anything else going on, let me know. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I'm going to dive into showing you guys what this is. What I'm calling uh, our first person shoveler. <laughs> For anyone who saw uh, some of the earlier uh, devlogs or, or things that I've been posting, uh, you will notice right away that uh, we have this sweet environment in here now, created by the other Logan, not the Logan who is on the stream at the moment. Uh, but I love this. I love this environment. I don't know why I kind of always do the same circle. I'm going to wander over here to show some other parts of it. So the game idea is uh, you are in this, I don't know, area, this jungle temple area. And uh, you have a time limit to try and find all of the treasures. Uh, we still are using prototype art to represent uh, the treasures. But eventually uh, these red spheres will be replaced with uh, like maybe a pile of rocks or something to indicate that there's a treasure buried there. You dig it for a little while. And then the treasure appears again, still prototype art. And then you solve the little puzzle. And you get the treasure. Now there are nine treasures remaining. Um, one of the things that we may work on on stream uh, is uh, it was in Logan's original conception 
uh, to have a switch to open this door. So we may add a switch uh, to open that up. Otherwise, uh, I'm gonna have to wander around this way to get back up to the rest of the stage. I just kind of want to show you guys around. Oh, and there's some other um, interesting new things. I don't know if you guys can hear that sound. Makes a nice bonk noise. Or like when you when you try to shovel the air. It is just a whoosh noise. <laughs> My uh, contribution to this game has been the um, shovel animations and the player movement. Oh, we've got some player movement bugs uh, that need to get fixed. So maybe we'll work on that on stream as well. I'm gonna try to... Ah! Let me up there. Let me up there. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Logan may have fixed that. Uh, last night, it was actually possible to jump straight up onto that last rock. <laughs> I think he raised it just to, just to spite me. Okay, let me see if I can make it this time. No! Where, where was my coyote time? There should be five frames of coyote time. I think, actually, um, the, the coyote time working less well on this new environment may be related to the player movement bugs that we have to fix. Um, because the way it works is uh, the player is a state machine, which I can show the code for in a little bit if you guys are interested. Um, but you you are you know in the idle. You walk and then you switch to a falling state. And once the falling state starts, it starts counting down um, uh, frames for when it will let you jump on the air. Right? That's that's coyote time for Wily e. Coyote, a very common thing in platforming games. Uh, but I think that uh, when you get close to like a not square edge that you slide in idle down the edge and idle does not um the idle state does not grant you any uh coyote time frames and so i think in this case where it's not working what's happening is i'm actually like switching between uh walking and idle because of the um the curve on that but i'm not sure anyway let me see if i can make this jump hey i made it i made it no, 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 no. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Ooh, we've only got 28 seconds. We're totally not winning this. We're not winning this. Logan, have you tested out, uh, like, if the time um, limit is reasonable? I, uh, I probably should have been trying harder, trying to see if I could, uh... uh... Seven remaining. I'm not going to make it. Uh... Oof. <laughs> anyway, that's what we've got. That's where, where we are in the game jam. Game over. There were still seven treasures remaining. Try again. No, that's that's looking uh good, Logan. The um I mean I guess I haven't uh played enough times to to really see, but like the treasures being in a bunch more places, uh them not being sort of hovering in the air over here like they were before. Um it's consistently giving ten treasures. That seems that seems like uh that is working nicely. So, uh, let me get up my to-do. Oh, we still have to fix this. <laughs> yeah, this, this title screen um, is intended to show the environment. Um, and with the old uh, prototype environment, this actually looked like, okay, but now we're, the camera's too far out. We're, we're circling around the outside of uh, this environment, the outside that no one is meant to see. Yeah, let me get my to-do list up. I think I'm actually going to open it up over here and then bring it over so I don't have to open up my Google Docs on stream. Uh, da -da -da, da -da, wild jam. I've been having a great week, guys. Working on this jam has been so much fun. Making those shovel animations um, and putting in the silly sound effects, I've just been having a great time. Um, you know, I know uh, this is probably a lot lighter stuff than we usually do. Uh, you know, last stream we were doing deterministic network physics. <laughs> uh, but we'll get back to that stuff. We'll get back to that stuff. Uh, the, the jam is ending on Sunday. I'm not sure what, you know, what, what uh, to stream about next week, but possibly going back to physics or rollback netcode or um, maybe even the, the VR stuff we were working on before. Anyway, um, so my to-dos. Uh, those two character movement bugs. Oh, um, trying to prevent sliding, which I think may help with the coyote time thing. Uh, the door that opens. Oh, and I was thinking about, I mean, I'm not going to do this on stream, but it would be cool to have like a, 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 uh, web 
end point for the high score because we want to have a high score list. Uh, hopefully, we'll get that in before the end of the jam. Uh, but making a little script sitting on the internet somewhere to uh, ingest and distribute those those high scores, I think, would be really cool. Totally not necessary. <laughs> it is a stretch goal, but um, yeah. <sighs> so, what do you guys think? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking about this button. Kind of thinking about this button. Hey, Smaileba! Welcome to the stream! Oh, and the overlay is not showing. Let me get it back up there so I can see what ca character you got. Did you get a character? Where are you, Smaileba? Did the overlay crash? We've been having the overlay crash a lot lately. Only ourselves to blame since we made it. Oh my god. Well... I mean, what's the point of having an overlay if it never updates? I'm going to restart the overlay. Uh, give me a moment. Restart our overlay here. Sorry, you guys will have, will have lost your sweet characters. You'll have to, um, you'll have to say something and see what characters you get next. Oh, come on. What are the keys for this? Huh? Okay, closer. All right. The one downside of having this really fantastic game dev week um, is that I have not been sleeping very much. So I may make slightly less sense than usual on stream. Sorry about that. Ooh, I am awesome. I'm like a gladiator. Going shirtless, ready to ready to fight. Okay. So I'm thinking this button. I'm thinking this button. So what the Logans uh, were thinking was a button that you stand on that then opens the door. And I think that makes sense from a, a usability perspective. Um, we don't want to have to... Tim has returned! <laughs> we don't ha want to have to teach the player like that there's this other interaction to um, like flip switches. Although I totally did build the player uh, code that there is like an interaction system. You just smack things with your shovel. <laughs> um, and so I think what I'm going to do is let's make a button that you stand on, an area that you just go into and you stand there for a second, you know, maybe it lowers down and then uh, opens up the door. But let's make it so you can also stand at a distance and just smack it. Just because I really want to use that uh, that interaction of just jabbing something with the shovel. So to start that off, uh, let's open up the environment scene. I haven't been in, the, in this scene uh, since... Logan uh, did his amazing work here. Let me um, get in closer. All right, so we are going to be in the temple here. Oh, and Logan shared a, um, is this the temple? Am I in the right place? Wait, what? Okay, here's the temple. Logan shared this morning uh, these cool like uh, giant snake statues that he created for the temple, uh, which I imagine will get uh, committed to the git, to the git repo at some point. Okay, so I'm thinking we'll put the button kind of in the middle. We'll we'll do some prototype art because uh, we don't have the real art yet. Put like a cylinder and um, put some collision on it. Put an area on top of it to detect the player standing there. And I guess I'm a little bit wary of changing this scene because we're gonna get merge conflicts once um once we get those. Uh, 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 snake statues. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. So we have the world, we have environment, we have chest spawn areas. Oh, and these are all the new spawn areas that uh, Logan added. So I guess I'll keep that out of environment. Um, maybe I'll just put it uh, as another direct child of world. So this will be uh, not SG. Uh, this will be a um, a static body. Uh, we'll call it temple door button. Just bring it over here. That seems that seems good for now. Uh, we will add a mesh to it. Make a cylinder mesh. Um, so I'm going to want the cylinder to move. I'm going to want the whole static body to move. 
uh, because when it goes down, I don't want you to crash into it um, anymore. So this will need to be lower, and then we can lower the whole thing. That seems good. I think that puts it like at a Y of zero for its local transform here. Because the rest of it's underground, right? Yeah. Uh, although that's too high. Let's, um, let's shorten this thing. Height one. Uh, it still seems a little high. Point two five. Yeah, that looks like a button. Let's put a material on it. We'll just set uh, an albedo color. Make it red. Interactable things are red when I'm prototyping. Um, and the static body. Um, or wait, how are we going to lower the whole thing? I think we actually need to have a spatial node with the static body with the mesh so that we can have a, a script on the spatial lower the static body. I think that makes the most sense. Let me change type here to spatial. We'll add a static body and then put the mesh on it. Um, we are going to, uh, I guess, Create a collision shape. To put a cylinder shape on it. Um, and we'll just have to make sure it's the same dimensions. So 0 0.25 and this mesh 0 0.25 with this top and bottom radiuses of 1. Let me just. Yeah. That looks good. It's, for whatever reason, I can't really see the shape. Um, I don't know if it's just there's so much stuff going on here. Or also, too, like I know the collision shapes you put in an extents, and the meshes you put in a, um, like the actual dimensions of the thing. So I think possibly I need to double these. Hmm. No, no, that actually, no, okay, I guess I just wasn't seeing it. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong about, about that. I always get confused by that, though. Learning all the different types of nodes seems like the toughest part of Godot, says Tim Day. It's definitely uh, a big part of the learning curve, just figuring out what all is possible, uh, because there is just so much stuff in there, so many different classes, so many different nodes. Um, I am constantly like solving a problem and then later realizing like, oh, there's a node for that. <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah, Godot is awesome. Very powerful tool. Let's next put an area on this. Oh, this actually is nice too, having uh, this spatial parent for putting the area so that we wouldn't have like a static body with an area as a child, which of course you can do, but this just feels better. So put an area. So the static body is for the player to crash into it um, as far as just like, um, I guess collision. Uh, and the area is for detection, for detecting that the player is standing in this spot. Uh, so we will also put a similar um, collision shape but we will put it on top and make it um, make it taller. So we'll put a cylinder shape, and we're going to raise the whole area up so that this sits just like right on top of there. So when the player enters this area, we'll activate the button. Uh, let's mess around with some collision things here. So this needs to be in the environment layer. I'll just say it doesn't collide with anything. The player should have the um, environment on its collision mask. This area. 
uh, it is going to collide only with the player, which I think is this one. Or no, it's so okay. So it's going to be on the environment. It's going to collide only with the player. Actually, it doesn't even need to be on the environment. Let's just say it just collides with the player. That should be fine. Um, it is monitoring. It is not monitorable. That seems good. Uh, we need to have our animation player to animate the button descending. That should be super easy. Let's create a new, um, we'll call it press for the animation. And we are going to move the static body down. So we'll go do its transform. Hey, some more people are turning up. Oh, DJ Kosher got a new uh, character. Now an orc with a braid and Shuba. <laughs> DJ Kosher needs his character back. Hey, Shuba. Let's animate. So we've got a static body. We will just create a keyframe, create the reset tracks. Then we will lower the static body. I think mathematically, it should just be negative point two five, right? That will completely disappear. Do we want to completely disappear it? We can have it be exposed just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do it by hand here. I like that. Okay, so we'll say negative point one. Round it like that. Is that a big enough difference, though? Well, hang on. Let's add, let's add the keyframe so I don't. Oh no! So I don't lose my changes like I just did. I spent so much time uh, animating that um, that shovel, and how many times I accidentally undid my changes by like messing around with the uh, the player down here, the animation editor thing in this lower half. Should have known better. Okay, so it starts up here, comes down. Um, that seems roughly good as far as time. I think we should maybe add a little bit of easing because uh, I want it to not move so robotically. Let's have it um, move quicker at first and then slower after. So maybe something like that. Oops. Maybe even more. Maybe make the easing even more extreme. See how that looks. Oh, I like that. It's like boom, just straight down. It's good. Okay. Now we're going to need to add a script here. We'll detect the player. We'll make the button go down. We'll probably, yeah, we'll get to the door in a second. Um, Let's attach this script. Temple door button in environment. That looks good. Drop over to VS Code here. We are going to need some on ready variables. Oh, did you guys see um, in Godot 4 and then also coming in Godot 3.5? There's this new uh, uh, system where you can like name nodes in a scene with a unique name and then uh, refer to it. Uh, by that name within that scene as opposed to, you know, like um, what we're doing here uh, is these on ready to grab, uh, what do I want to grab? I want to grab animation player. Why is the autocomplete not working? There we go. I had to save the scene before VS Code's autocompletion would be working. But I think, um, like you would give it a unique name within the scene and then I think you do like percent something like that with whatever its unique name is and I didn't I haven't tested it so I don't know what the UI is but I think it's like you come in here and you give it this unique name and then you can refer to it that way um, from your code which is maybe not super useful for this particular case but um, hey redstone pro number three welcome to the stream but for like UIs where you have these really deep uh, uh, node hierarchies and you have to have like a massive number of on ready variables that you constantly have to update every time you move something around within that hierarchy I think it's gonna be really great 
All right, what was I doing? Um, yeah, so we also need to grab the area. Or wait. Um, so we want to disable this area after the character has pressed it. What is the easiest way to do that? Uh, we could clear the collision mask is one way. We could disable the collision shape, which is another way. We could actually bake this into the animation, honestly. We don't need to do it with code. Um, if I animate the disabled property on the collision shape, I think we can say that's disabled. Not sure if I've ever done it that way, but um, we'll find out if that works. Ah, cool. So it's like a like a, a checkbox. Yeah, I saw some of the the pictures from the um, uh, the issue because I'm like subscribed to the Godot uh, repo on GitHub, so I, I read like all of the issues. <laughs> <laughs> probably I shouldn't do that. It's probably a massive waste of time, but I enjoy it. Uh, and I saw some of the screenshots and there was kind of like a little percent looking uh, logo. Hey, Redstone Pro, I am working on my first person shoveler game that I'm making together with a team of Logans, one of whom is on the stream for the Godot Wild Jam number 45. Specifically, we are uh, adding a button to open this door. This is some temporary art. The other Logan on the team is going to make some real art for it. Uh, at some point. So I'm just trying to make this button work. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do over in code, uh, or do we need to do anything? I guess we still need to connect to the signal. This is annoying me. I want the order of these tabs to be different. I'm just going to put this one down here. Um, okay, because I want to have my, I want to be able to switch between my frames like that. Okay. Um, so when the player enters the area, not area entered, we need a body entered. Body entered. Oop, no, no, I did that wrong. I don't want it on the world. Sorry. I wanted to do that to this temple door script. And we're actually going to make this whole branch into its own scene um, in a little bit. But uh, when I'm first throwing something together, I like to do it in, you know, whatever scene I'm putting it in. Um, but that creates for little funny mistakes like I just made. Okay, so body entered, and I want it to go on the temple door button script. There we go. You can add variable states to animations. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you could put a lot of stuff in animations. You can have animations call functions. I'm using that for a lot of the sound effects uh, and different things for the, the shovel animations uh, or just the player animations. Um, so like the, the footsteps, that's calling a method to, to play those, uh, which actually I think you could do without calling a method. There is also this um, audio playback track uh, that I didn't use. I'm not sure what that does because I, I think I never use it. <laughs> I think I always take this approach where I call a method which then plays the audio. Um, maybe one of these days I should try that audio playback track. Redstone Pro has got to go get a team. Arvid Schoenberg, welcome to the stream. I want to make some progress on my own game project. I want to create a level editor and for now I'm sitting here doing nothing but watching you doing your stuff. Sigh. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I mean, thanks for coming, but sorry for distracting you. Ooh, and you got a really cool character, Arvin Schoenberg. You got uh, a, a bearded fellow with, uh, I think that's supposed to be the, the sailor cap. Was there anyone else who came in that I missed what there? Oh, well, Shuba's got sort of like an orc shaman with a Hulk Hogan stash going. <laughs> Redstone Pro looks like some kind of orcish gladiator. Anyway, um, that's my, my, my ADD coming out here. We are going to, uh, when the player enters the area, we are going to play the press animation. So it should be simple enough. I think as far as just pressing the button, this should all work, but let's test it. Let's get in here. If this doesn't work, I'm going to move the, the character in here uh, so we don't have to walk so far. 
No, it didn't work. Or did it work and I just didn't notice it working? Ooh, someone bringed me. Thank you, anonymous bringer. <laughs> Redstone Pro says uh, he needs a, a 2D dev. I'm unhappy with the pick, thanks. Or I'm not unhappy with the pick, thanks. <laughs> so I actually couldn't tell if that worked, to be completely honest. Um, let's uh, temporarily move the player into the temple. I have to orient myself here. Ooh, I didn't notice the, the other sort of underworld here. Uh, so the temple's over that way. We'll drag the player over there. And see where that put us. Hopefully not inside of a wall. Uh, I put us inside of a wall. Wait, this isn't the temple? I'm so lost right now. This is the temple. Where did I just put the player? I put the player inside a random wall. Okay. Here is the temple. Let's try that. All right, okay, so I'm looking at this button. I'm standing here, then I'm coming back. Okay, so it did go down. I was expecting to like visibly see the camera go down, uh, but I did not, and that's probably fine. That's probably fine. Uh, after the button goes down, the, um, the door over here will start to open. We'll play some sound effects, so that'll give enough feedback to the player. Uh, so that bit worked. Next, uh, let's make the door go down. Uh, we have to find the door in the world scene. Um, environment, got some cliff rocks. Can I just click it? Gate bars. Okay, cool. So we are going to animate this gate. Um, what is the best way to do that? I mean, we can, we can add a script to the gate bars, um, scene, uh, and an animation player. You go look at the gate bars. Uh, okay, so this is an inherited scene that is awesome. Or at least I think it is. That's what it appears to be. So I click this. Okay, so that goes to the... Yeah, okay, so it's an inherited scene. Fantastic. So Logan did good uh, setting that up. Um, and let's add... Or do I want to have an animation player on a thing to move itself? I never like doing that. Um, maybe I could put the animation player on the button or maybe just do a tween let's just do a tween let's tween uh, a configurable we'll have like a we'll export a node path on the button so that we can pick the uh, gate bars and then uh, we can have it go down how tall are these gate bars I'm just gonna move them for a second to see whoa they're pretty tall so you're gonna want to have them come down there Something like that. All right, I'll undo that. Let's go back to our uh, temple door button. Let's add a tween. And like I was saying before, we'll put an export node path. Uh, so this will be door path. Uh, which will be nothing to start with. We'll just leave that. And then we're going to set up... Why are you complaining at me? Expected var. Unready. Blah, var, door path. Or why am I saying unready? Ah, I meant to do export. Export node path var. And then we'll add a normal var over here, which will be the door. And when we get to our ready function, we are going to uh, get the door from the path, which will that work? I think it will. It should have been initialized before our ready function runs. If not, we can we can grab it later. Um, and we need to do an on ready. 
var for our tween. And I always forget to use how to use tween between using it. Um, put some types on here. Animation player tween. So I can auto complete to uh, to do the the code for me. Um, Forget even like what it starts with. Okay, we're gonna look at the docs for a second. Tween interpolate. Okay, so we want to interpolate property, and the property we're going to interpolate is the, um, I guess, translation. If we had to do a more sophisticated tween. Like, how would we interpolate just a piece of the transform? I haven't, I haven't ever done that. Hmm. Well, anyway, we don't have to do that now, so we don't have to figure it out. Um, so interpolate. Why aren't you auto-completing VS Code? Interpolate property. The clean says. Oh, oh, uh, translation colon colon x should also work with var blah equals node notation, I think, just saying. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which thing you're referring to, Arvid, but the clean, uh, does that work at like arbitrary depths? Because like, uh, like let's say we wanted to mess with not the translation, but like, I don't know, just like a piece of the transform matrix. Could we do like um, transform basis uh, x x like is that is that a valid property? Because um, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Too few arguments. All right, what are the arguments? Uh, I believe the object, then the property name, initial value, final value, duration. So um, our door the property name is translation um i guess yeah we'll just try doing translation y like the clean was suggesting um and then the uh initial value i guess whatever it is currently door translation y and then i guess i have to figure out what its new value should be we'll just sort of move it there and, and look so the temple door, um, our gate bars here. So the transform is starting out negative four. We're going to want it to go down to, let's say, negative, if I go all the way to negative eight, where does that take me? It's just, I like round numbers. I'm a sucker for round numbers. Hmm, that's a little too high. 8.2. Nope, then we up negative 8.2. Yeah, that seems good. We'll go to negative 8.2. So I'll undo a couple of times to get it back to where it belongs. Negative 0 or negative 8.2. And the speed, let's just say one second arbitrarily. Returns a value when I'm discarding it. Start returns a value when I'm discarding it. Just some warnings. I'm not going to worry about those. Sorry, it's a single colon, says the clean. All right. Let's uh, let's give this a shot, uh, but first we have to actually put in this node path to the temple door, or to the um, what is it called? Gate bars. Let's try this. All right, so I go stand on it, and it comes down. All right, I didn't realize these were flat. I thought they were round. Oh, I'm getting stuck on them though. I like um, seeing them. If 
but not if I'm going to get stuck on them. That's a little annoying. I guess I only got stuck the one time. The rest of the times I'm just sort of sliding over it. Okay. Um, that's good. We just need to bake in some delays uh, to uh, make this a little bit more cinematic. I'm not going to do sounds on the stream. Uh, da, 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 da. Seems that you're not seeing animated raised bars go up into the wall a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's fast. Never mind. Just move the collider down. Um, yeah, I could. I could. Um, I could move the collider down. I could just disable collision on them. Cone Anglin ninety, welcome to the stream. Maybe disable collision in the animation. Yeah, that is a possibility too. Um, yeah, so. We have a reference to the gate bars, which has just this static collision in it. Um, I'm going to have to teach uh, the button that that's where this uh, static body is to actually disable it. I don't know. I, I think I might just leave it for now. Um, because I only got stuck once. I didn't get stuck any of the other times. Otherwise, it's just this little hop. The hop's kind of nice. I think I might leave it for the moment. I step on the button, then that goes immediately, which I don't really want. Let's um, let's change this a little bit. So rather than um, doing the uh, tween as soon as we're starting the pressing, I'm gonna have the one happen and then the other. Uh, that way we can add a little bit of a delay. So let's go to our world and the temple door button. I think this is the point where we're going to make this into its own scene. Um, we are going to do save branch as scene. I'm going to put it in environment. We're not going to call it temple door button. We are going to call it, uh, um, I don't know, door button. <laughs> With sort of the idea that maybe we could have more buttons. I know we won't, but um, I always like to name things that way, but we will call this one as um, temple door button. Uh, and then when we open up this scene, just name this door button. Okay. And on our door button, just make sure that this is connected correctly. That seems fine. Um, so on the animation player, we're gonna have animation finished that into our script. Oh, our script is still named Temple Door Button. Let me rename that. Temple Door Button name to just Door Button. That's going to confuse VS Code. I don't care. Don't save. Back in VS Code here. And we need to create this again. Create it for me. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say if anim name equals press, then we're going to start our tween. So one thing, then the other thing, um, and we'll bake some noises in here. Uh, I think I'll probably have the button handle all of the noises, because uh, I don't want to have to add too much logic to the actual door itself. Uh, mostly just in case Logan decides to do something um, more with it to make that easier. Um, oh, so the last thing I want to do to this button was something I said early on. I wanted to make it so you could stab it with the shovel <laughs> as a way to uh, activate the button also. Um, so that should be easy. I think the way I built the interaction system was we have to set a particular collision layer, so interactable. And we have to add a method named interact. Uh, interact. And we'll actually we'll have that call the animation player, and we'll have our on body entered call interact. Just to avoid a little bit of code duplication. All right, now let's try this. So two things we should expect to see. 
uh, the delay between the door coming down. Yep, that looked good. And the next thing is I want to be able to hit this with my shovel. Oops, don't dig it. Oh, well, that didn't work. We shouldn't be able to dig that. Um, hmm. All right, well, let's go look at the code in the player uh, state machine. I think that would be in the poke, poking state. All right, so we poke. We do our interaction raycast. We check um, if it's colliding. The interaction raycast should only interact or only collide with things that are interactable. And digging target, we need to get rid of this. It's not actually a digging target. So what's going wrong here? Let me look at the, the interaction raycast on the player. The way this works is the player has a bunch of rays pointing out of its uh, face to uh, decide where it's going to dig and, and uh, what it's going to interact with. Hey, Nyanel! Uh, I want to see the player scene. So, okay, interaction raycast. It only interacts, oh, interactable areas, but we want it to do both areas and bodies because this is a body. All right, let's try it now. <laughs> Why are you digging the button? Oh, it did it. It just did, it played also this dig um, animation, which it just plain shouldn't. Um, why doesn't it do that when we stab a wall? Oh, because we have to do it all up here. Okay. All right, we're going to duplicate a bunch of code. So we want this to count as poking a wall. I just still kind of don't understand why we even get to this code to have it do the poke dirt particles, like, how do we even get there? Move your body, shake your body, maybe it's a button digger now. <laughs> <laughs> the game you always dreamed of, allowing you to dig buttons? Okay, um, so I stab a wall, that's still working. When I stab a button, why does it do that? It's so weird. Um, I think we might have to set some breakpoints and walk through here and see what's going on. Yeah, because I just don't see it. I just don't see it. All right, we'll set a breakpoint. We'll see if the, the debugging through to VS Code works. I sometimes have trouble with it. We hit our breakpoint. Here we are. Yeah, I am having some trouble with the VS Code debugging. And everything is coming through here. Nothing's coming through. I'm I'm stopped. The game is stopped, but nothing is working. Okay. Uh we will temporarily disable uh external editor. Actually, I don't think I need to do that. I think if I go to script and open something this way, no. Is there a way to like force it to open in the editor without having to constantly disable VS Code? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just disable VS Code. External editor, turn that off. And let's go to our, uh, what file was that? That was our poking state. Um, and we want to see what happens when we get here. So, let's poke that button. All right, here we are. This is all looking okay. Let's step uh, over the interaction raycast. We're forcing it to update. Um, we're checking if it's colliding. It is colliding. We are getting the collider. We're checking if it has the interact method. 
it does not have the interact method. Oh, I think I know what's going on here. We are poking the um the static body and the static body doesn't have the interact method. It's the um it's the uh 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 spatial that has it. So I guess okay, let's restructure the way this node works. Um Let's kill our current running process. Now, now asks, who made the sounds? A whole bunch of people. Um, so the uh, majority of the sounds are from uh, different asset packs. I'll open up the readme so I can show you. Um, so uh, the shovel dig miss wall sounds uh, from different packs. The footsteps are from another pack. The There are some sounds that I made myself, though. <laughs> The character jumping noises, and when you land from a big fall and go, oof, uh, that's me. That's my voice. I couldn't find any grunting noises that I liked when I was going through uh, like free asset packs. All of the grunting noises were painful grunting noises, like you're getting hit grunting, not just like a, Ugh, like a jump. Uh, so I, I ended up recording those myself. Nainel asks, do you do web dev for a living? Uh, yeah, primarily. Uh, so I do contract software development uh, is what I do. I do mostly web development, but some other things, including some amount of contract game development as well. I want to move more and more into doing contract game development. Um, but that's a multi-year long path that I am on. So what were we doing? Um, Oh, we're going to rearrange the uh, scene tree for this button. So what I'm thinking is we're going to make the door button itself be the uh, area 2D. And then we're going to have the static body inside of the area 2D. Uh, and I think, I think that should work. Um, I hope. Let's try it. So this is going to become an area. And we're going to move the collision shape up here. Uh, this area, we did make some changes. I'll try and mimic those changes. We set the... Um, it doesn't need to be on an area. We set its mask to, what is that, player? Um, oh, pl uh, and we need to be on interactable. And then static body needs to not be interactable. Uh, so we can undo that change we did earlier to the interaction ray where we made it uh, target both areas and bodies. We can get rid of bodies again. So, let's delete this area. Uh, we're going to have to update our script to not say extends spatial, but extends area. So now it should detect our interact method and do the thing, I think. Let's, uh, let's run it and find out. Ha! <laughs> we can smack the button. It kind of seemed like it started going down before it got hit, though, didn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Let's um. Let's maybe make the animation for the button like a little bit slower. Like um, we'll still start at the same spot. Let's make this like. 0.7 and we'll still end at the same spot but we're going to just duplicate this starting bit oh come on right click there we go duplicate um so that should add a little bit of a delay let's just try that really quick yeah delay was maybe a little too long let me let me see it again Yeah, I have it at, at 0.2 seconds. Let's make it be 0.1 second. Uh, and I think that will be perfect. This can come back uh, there, I think. One last try. I do see there are some chat messages coming in. I will check them out in a second. There, that is perfect. We can smack the button. <laughs> we can smack the button as I always wanted to. Oh, but then we can't smack it anymore. Why can't we smack it anymore? 
that's interesting. Um, is it because the collision area is too high? Let me try lowering that. We'll have it cover this whole space here. And now we can dig it. Why can we dig it? We shouldn't be able to dig it. Huh. Oh, is it because we're disabling the area? That's totally what it is. Um, so we want to leave the area enabled, but I don't know, whatever. This is fine. I I'm just I just want to be able to smack the button. It's not important. I think I think this is okay. Alright, so what are folks saying? Um, DJ Revert, welcome to the stream. Should have used Roblox sound, just saying. <laughs> okay. No, no, would you recommend JS for backend? I mean, yeah, the JavaScript for backend stuff um, is fine. I primarily do uh, PHP for backend things, but uh, JavaScript does make a decent server-side language as well. I think I should stop worrying about what tech, what domain provider, what hosting provider, what security provider, an email provider, and so on to use. Just grab something and go. I concur. That That is what you should do. I'm spending more time thinking about than actually doing something. Chestnut Puck, welcome to the stream, uh, says, trying to make that transition myself. It's very hard to make money with games. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a, like, games as far as, like, um, an industry is really diverse. Because you, okay, so you could make money from actually making and selling games. That's one thing. Um, you can do contract work for other people on their games. Uh, you can do uh, consulting, training, courses, um, the whole education area of games. Um, there's a lot of things that you could do in games to, to make money. Uh, I'm personally, uh, at the moment, focused on doing contract work, so uh, being paid uh, to work on other people's games because um, it's it's relatively low risk. And that's like basically what I'm doing anyway. I'm being paid to work on other people's uh, web apps or you know whatever. Uh, so it's it's a very comfortable space for me to exist in uh, where I'm thinking, you know contract game dev work, if I can build that up so that I'm doing that more than I'm doing web development game dev work, uh, I will be a, a happier person. <laughs> and uh, you know, could maybe use that to to work a little bit on my own games or whatever. Isn't there a way to programmatically make animation player scale time? Yes, I believe there is. There is a way to scale time. Uh, why not enable debug collisions? I mean, I could. I could enable debug collisions. <laughs> um, the reason why I ask is JS can do front end and back end at once. Two birds, one stone. Yeah. Have you been able to find Godot contract work? Yes. Um, so uh, not all of it I can necessarily uh, talk about, but one that I can is um, I uh, am sponsored by Heroic Labs to work on the uh, Nakama add-on for Godot. I've done uh, work for them before. Uh, I made a tutorial for them. They hired me to make a tutorial. Um, so that's been that's been working out quite well. Um, but yeah, there there is there is contract work for Godot. In fact. Um, even though, like, people always say, like, oh, if you want to actually, like, get any work, you should use Unity or Unreal. Um, and that's just not exactly true. Like, there are more jobs available for Unity and Unreal, but there's also, like, way more people who can do that work, right? Whereas with Godot, there's way fewer jobs available, but way, way fewer people to do that work. So if you can uh, make yourself be well-known in the much smaller group of you know, good Godot developers, you can end up being like a go-to person when someone's saying like, oh, I need paid Godot work to do this thing. Uh, and rather than them having, I don't know, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people to pick from, they have this little pool and you have the opportunity to stand out and get some of that work. Um, so it is definitely viable uh, to do Godot contract work and make some money. That's all I'm saying. It's awesome. I'm starting to see more positions. A lot of them are sketchy crypto things. There is a lot of crypto in games right now. I don't really understand crypto, and I know there's a lot of like negative uh, uh, attitudes towards it. I don't personally have like an overly strong attitude, uh, uh, overly strong negative attitude towards crypto. I just don't understand it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, there seems to be a lot of money, a lot of investment money 
uh, in crypto-related things. Um, and that's coming into games as well. It's not just in games, by the way. Uh, there's tons of crypto money coming in for just general tech things. Uh, just being a software developer doing non-game stuff, I see that all over the place as well. So, BNT Frying Pan, welcome to the stream. Uh, someone's talking about JavaScript. I won't get into that. <laughs> NFT has ruined crypto reputation. Yeah, NFTs in particular are kind of strange. Uh, people are buying and selling essentially receipts, which isn't that weird. I mean, people buy and sell receipts in other domains all the time. Um, like uh, uh, different financial vehicles are essentially like buying and selling receipts. People buy and sell other people's debt, you know, like, but I don't know, just let's not get into it. <laughs> uh, okay, so what do we have to do to finish this door? Nothing, I think. I think we finished it. I think this door is done. This button for this door uh, is, is ready to rock here. I do, oh, did I break it though? Okay, other than I broke it. So now you can only hit it. Okay. Hang on. Uh, as a mask with the player. Uh, it doesn't need to be monitor obble. It's on the interactable layer. It interacts with the player. Oh, the um, the signal is no longer connected. That's what it was. When we rearranged the scene tree, um, oh, geez, I'm expecting to be able to press Vim commands because I've been using VS Code for the last bunch of weeks. I will switch back to VS Code in a second. It's just having issues with the debug, uh, debugging Godot from VS Code. Okay, let me go over to... Uh, here, re-enable. I want my VS Code, please. Let's close all these. Okay. Um, door button. Take me back to VS Code land. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's see if I fixed how I just broke it. There we go. Okay, so you can smack it with your shovel, or you can uh, stand on it. Um, we'll leave this weird sort of collision stuff going on here for now. Um, I don't think a, a person can get permanently stuck there anyway, even though I did get stuck there once. Uh, I think you can jump or just back out. So let's call this button done. We will commit uh, what we've got. I do not want to commit my changes to the main scene because that's where I moved the player into the temple. We are going to... Um, here, I'll make this big so you guys can see what I'm doing. Not that it's super interesting. Uh, we'll leave that not added to get. Or I just was about to add the thing I said I'm not going to add. Okay, player states poking. Get status. What do we got? Everything but main. Let's just verify that the main changes are just that transform. That's cool. Let's commit this. Add button to open temple door and push sweet ah what i do uh let's look at our to do so um yeah i guess i'm just going to update my to do that says we need sound effects um and sound effects to temple door and button uh, i will work on those off stream um, looking for sound effects is, is extremely time consuming. Uh, like it doesn't seem like it would be, but, uh, yeah, I can spend hours <laughs> looking for good sound effects. Um, and that's just not good streaming. So let's do some of these bugs. Let's go after some of these, uh, bugs with player movement. El Marco, welcome to the stream. I rejected lots of jobs for crypto because of moral reasons. Now, now, debt is understandable, but buying a painting for 200 million <laughs> when it stays in a museum. Hey, Yiv uh, Yvonne Von? Yvonne Von? 37, welcome to the stream. Uh, NFT is a pyramid scheme. 
Made a lot of money with crypto. It reinforces the scam aspect of it for me. Dr. Revert, why are you using VS Code, by the way? Um, so I recently started using VS Code. Um, uh, okay, so I had already used VS Code for C++ projects and C Sharp projects. Um, and I really like in VS Code that I have my Vim key bindings. Uh, and in the Godot editor, the Godot editor is, is very nice. Uh, the autocomplete works better here. The, the debugger works better over here. But you can get decent autocomplete and usually a debugger that works over in VS Code. And I get the, the key bindings. So I switched to doing um, Godot development, GD script development. Uh, I guess I, I did Godot C++ and Godot C Sharp development already in VS Code, but um, doing GDScript there as well. Um, and then I started unifying a whole bunch of my other things. Like I, I had, for the last couple of years, been using uh, PHP Storm for PHP development. Uh, and it's like, well, let me try to use VS Code for that too. And like, I've still been using just plain Vim for Python development. Um, so I will start doing Python development over in VS Code too. So I'm just like trying to unify everything on one editor to hopefully not lose my mind. Uh, but VS Code is is a decent editor. Um, I've been a, a, a Vim user for like 20 years at this point. Um, and so like I need Vim key bindings, but I've gotten to the point where I just don't have the patience anymore to customize Vim. Uh, like I, I did at one point have it set up to do uh, PHP like line debugging from Vim and, and C line debugging from Vim and like all of these, I had autocomplete uh, in some programming languages working with like, you know, drop downs and everything. Uh, but it's just, it's just so much work. So like, I want to, I want to have the keys of Vim, but the ease of use of VS code. And I want to use just one editor. So that's kind of how I got here. Collision is the most tricky thing in 3d, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 3d, like a lot of things that would be easy in 2d just become hard because the math is just harder. Um, yeah, I think like you end up doing significantly more, uh, I will say the medium level math, <laughs> whereas in uh, 2d, you do like just simple math all day long. So that for me is the hardest part. Uh, but I don't know. Collision is, is tricky everywhere. Uh, animation is like so much harder in 3d than it is in 2d. Um, I don't know. I'm enjoying doing this 3D project though, especially especially my my glorious shovel animations. Got my shovel moving all over the place here. Let's dig something. Yeah. <laughs> Chestnut Buck is also using just the out of the box Vim. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, I was so hardcore about Vim. I saw some Vim books around here somewhere. They might be in the basement. But uh, yeah, I just don't have I just don't have the patience. I just don't have the patience anymore. <laughs> I I for a while was like, well, I'll I'll customize Vim in Python because there's the uh, different flavors of Vim that let you code in in uh, like Python and Perl and other languages. But like I don't know, that was hard too. Uh, VS Code is is got so many add-ons and uh, you customize it in JavaScript, um, which for whatever reason is easier to approach than Vim in Python. I don't know. Anyway. What are we doing next, guys? We are doing some some player movement bugs. Um, the ability to climb really steep walls. So there's a couple of possible solutions to this. Um, the sort of cop out solution. Wait, let me put my character back where he's supposed to be. Um, let's uh, ask Git to revert our changes here. That seemed to change a lot more things than I was expecting, but. This is still here, so that's good. Let's just let's just play it. Okay, we're back where we where we usually start. So um, the one example that uh, Logan gave when we were on our uh, video call, ah, geez, why is the co coyote time not seeming to to work anymore? Hmm. Well. I think uh, the sliding that I think is happening when you're in the idle state, if we can fix that, I'm hoping that'll fix the coyote time too. But just to show you this thing, um, on our call yesterday, Logan was showing how you could walk up this pretty much vertical wall. You could sort of just walk straight up it. <laughs> so that's one, and then here we slide down it. 
that's one of the player movement bugs. And then the thing with coyote time that I was just complaining about a bunch there. And what was the third thing? Oh, we were going to slightly lower the, the jump height. Uh, at one point in time, uh, I, the, the jump height got changed because I had a bug where I was double applying gravity uh, in a certain code branch. And then I fixed it. And then suddenly the jumps were like too high now. <laughs> um, so... Let me, this sliding thing is driving me crazy. So let's, let's look at that first. Um, I have not used Godot's like stop on slope stuff very often. Um, so I think that is what we want to use, but I'm going to, I'm going to look at the docs for that really quick. So that's kinematic body. So that's move and slide with snap, I think. Move and slide with snap. Moves the body while keeping it attached to slope, similar to move and slide. As long as the snap vector is in contact with the ground, the body will remain attached to the surface. This means you must disable snap in order to jump. Uh, you can do this by setting snap to the zero vector or by using move and slide. Hmm. So... One option is we use move and slide with snap for uh, the idle animation applying gravity, and that should stop us from sliding in idle. Then we can only slide when we are actively in motion, and I think that's what we want. Uh, and then that will help with the coyote time. For climbing the unreasonable walls, I think that's going to have to be solved in some different way. Um, Unless there's some more things we can tweak in move and slide to fix that. Floor max angle. The maximum angle in radians where a slope is considered a floor. I think that's just as far as detecting is on floor. Hmm. Has anyone else uh, tried to solve the um, walking up on reasonable surfaces? The way that I usually solve it is I make the collision shapes uh, not match the mesh. I make the collision shape, like the wall might be like a little wavy, but I don't make the collision shape match it. I just make it be like a straight, you know, completely flat 90 degree uh, angle there. Yvonne Von 37, hmm, gold digging game? <laughs> Put a Ferrari in it. Oh, I missed a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, da, da, da. NeoVim using LSP is really cool, but I try to use it as vanilla as possible. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to try NeoVim. Um, I'm still classic, classic Vim. <laughs> uh, would be useful to render current state on screen for easier debugging. Yeah, that would be that would be good. We might we might want to do that if um, this doesn't just immediately get fixed by uh, the first thing that I had in mind. Uh, you want to be able to climb or just fall? We want to not climb. <laughs> Chestnut Puck just avoids, it, avoids kinematic body in general. In that case, getting the slope angle and just turning off the ability to jump. There's a perimeter on the kin kinematic body called floor max angle or something. Yeah, we'll have to look at the code to see if floor max angle would actually prevent us from, from walking or if that is just used to determine if is on floor will return true. So we can look at the C++ code and see, um, see what, uh, what that says. So this isn't. So we have stop on slope as a bool. Hang on, I don't want to look at the docs for bool. Um, but where do you actually give the slope vector in this one? Snap. Or wait, wait, wait. So are these two totally different things? Stop on slope. Stop on slope. Body will not slide on slopes when you include gravity, and the body is standing still. Okay, so maybe stop on slope is really what I need to prevent the idle um, state from, from sliding. So then what, what, what would I use this with snap for, with anything? Or is this more about sticking to walls, like doing a, um, like a Mega Man X style, where you're, you're hanging on the wall and like sliding down? Let's try this first thing. Move and slide. Move and slide, linear velocity, up direction, stop on slope. So we just need a third argument. Let's go try it. 
Wait, I already have it set to true. What? What? <laughs> then how do we slide in idle? The body will not slide on slopes when you include gravity in linear velocity and the body is standing still. Hmm. Is there like maybe a teeny tiny bit of like X motion uh, that gets left over and that's like messing things up? Hmm. Let's go to idle. And let's say we're not doing any acceleration or deceleration. So I think it should be safe for us to say once we enter the idle state, we set the velocity uh, x to 0 and the velocity y, uh, not y, uh, z to 0. Let's see if I can't get my character to, to slide at this point. Okay, So I want to just go stand on the edge. And we still slide. We still slide. We might have to do the thing I think it was Dr. Revert suggested where we are putting the state on screen somewhere to see. Um, that is frustrating. What have you guys been saying? Uh, da, da, da. Uh, can you also tr uh, can you try using a ray shape with a cylinder on top? That way, your fat body hits the slope, but you might still slide up it. Uh, even if you do slide, you can still jump up and do the quake wall jump thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I did have a more complicated shape previously i had a a a cylinder so I, I mean it's um we're using a capsule and i had like a cylinder at the base to be like the uh the feet um but then there was some trouble going upwards so i want i want the i want to be able to slide up when we're in motion but i do not ever want to slide down hmm Um, let's try this had no effect. I'm just going to remove it. Um, let's add a, uh, optional variable here or argument here, snap, which we're going to set to false. Does that make sense? False. And then and then let's change this to move and slide with snap. And actually what we want to do is say if snap, do the one and then if not, then do the other. And I'm just gonna try doing this move and slide with snap and see how that acts. Um, and the uh, arguments change here. Which one is the snap vector? I think possibly the second one. Yeah, the second one. So we want that vector to just point straight down. And... What is this? Is that argument still the same? So we have uh, snap, up, stop on slope, true and false. Okay, so that's the same. Um, and in the idle state, we want to use the snap. Let's give that a shot, see what that does. Possibly nothing. And if that's the case, then we will still We'll go to, to that other idea that I think was Dr. Averts about. Yeah, we can still slide.
You know, okay. Going back to, I think it was the clean who was talking about the floor angle. We are deciding that we are done um, falling when we are is on floor. What if we make it so like these kind of crazy angles are considered the floor? So then we will change state out of because okay, I'm I'm thinking too many things at once here. Let's say the problem actually isn't that we're sliding on idle. What if the state we're in is the falling state and we're just not landing very quickly? Let's let's go back to this this idea of putting the current state on the screen. Um, what is the easiest way to do that? Uh, I think I will make a canvas layer on the player, and I will put a label and state idle or something like that in it. Move this down a little bit. We'll call this um, debug state label. Let's go over to the player. Do an on ready var to grab that. Ah. Debug state label. Okay, save, then come back here. That should get automatically going. There we go, debug state label. And I was previously doing some stuff with this where I was um, just like printing it to the to the console, but this is better. Debug state label text equals state colon that with new state, which I believe is an object. Let's go look at the state machine really quick. Um, current state. Yeah, it's the object. So I need to uh, do dot name. Where was I was in the player script? Okay, so theoretically, this should put the current player state up in the top left. There it is. So idle, walking, jumping, idle, walking, idle. Now let's slide a little bit. Not sliding. We are falling. Okay, so the idle state isn't the problem. We are falling very, 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 very slowly. <laughs> okay, so I think I think the clean was on to the 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 right thing here. We we make it so that it considers these much sharper angles to be floor, so that we can be is on floor and stop there. Um, is that going to make the problem where we can climb up unreasonably steep surfaces surfaces worse? Uh, I'm not sure. Because we don't want to just like stick to the wall. Hmm. Maybe I'm maybe this isn't really a problem. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. But what it, what should happen? if we crash into this like um hmm. well let's 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 try something let's try something we'll see if it makes it better or worse so what we have is the falling state is the problem. We just keep falling. Um, let's get rid of this snap stuff that I added, at least for now. I'll comment it out just in case later I decide that like, oh, I want to go down that snap direction a little more. Um, snap. Okay, so where is that argument that um, we were talking about? Move and slide, stop on slope, max slides, max floor angle. So we'll just pass the default and then the angle. Um, four slides, 
And then do we want to make the angle steeper? Yes, we want to make it steeper. So right now it's 45 degrees in radians. Um, let's do to, I don't know, 75. So I think when we're falling, or maybe we need to only do this like crazy angle thing when we're falling. So maybe this will amount to having some kind of some kind of argument. But let's try it. Let's just see what this does. So now What am I standing on? Am I standing on the ground? Am I hanging on the edge? I was hanging on the edge. Okay, so that's more that's more closer to what I want to happen here. No, this might be okay. This may make the other problem worse, though. So I'm just going to go to that that problematic wall and see. Also, this is a good test of if this fixed the um, the issues with the coyote time, because the coyote time was working perfectly uh, in the you know prototype environment where everything was 90 degree angles, um, and then it started getting a little weird in here. So okay, when I'm over here, if I go up, okay, I can climb up. I can just walk straight up that, and this. I can just walk straight up. Okay, so it has made that problem worse. Um, so what if we decide that the floor angle is like this really big value when you're jumping, or not jumping, when you're falling, but a much more reasonable value when you're walking forward? Um, I wonder if that'll just make people sort of like uh, jump and like stick to the wall and then. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's try something like that. Let me see. Run and snap. Let's say, uh, let's say we pass in the max floor angle. And we have a default for it, which is going to be the same default as Godot. Oh, actually, I'll just type it out. Or can I do that? Can I put a function in an argument? Is that allowed? That is allowed. You can use functions in argument defaults. I learned something new. My face looks swollen a bit. I hope I'm doing okay. Um, now you have me worried. <laughs> no, I'm 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 feeling fine, other than uh, overly tired because I've been um, staying up pretty late working on the on the game jam. Um, my lighting today is really bad. Uh, I didn't set up any extra lights, which I do when uh, I record videos in the dark. It's basically dark outside right now because the um, it's raining. Uh, it's totally cloudy dark out there. So hopefully it's just the lighting that's making uh, making me look a little strange. Oh, so I changed that, but I didn't uh, modify anything else. So idle, we want to not pass in this. We want to have falling. Um, oh, and this do move is going to need to pass some stuff in there too. Okay, where is... That was in the walking state, I think. Do move. Uh, input vector, apply gravity, and now max floor angle. And it's going to pass that in max floor angle. Um, okay, so the falling state needs to 
follow that method with a much bigger max floor angle. We'll do that 75. And actually, maybe let's lower it for walking. So then when you're walking, let's not consider it the floor um, if it's bigger than 25 degrees. Let's see what that does. Up, oh, something crashed. Invalid call to function move uh, expected one arguments. Oh, okay. Um, I was just getting confused about which which uh, method I was calling. Um, hang on. So this do move should actually do max floor angle, and then where this where this method is getting called is where we need to do true. Dag to rad twenty five. Oh come on, what did I do wrong this time? It says max floor angle twice. What am I doing? Am I losing my mind? Uh, okay, I may or may not be losing my mind. It, it's probably the sleep deprivation. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, we're sliding everywhere. We're sliding all over the place. Okay, well, that didn't work. Yeah, okay, so we're, we're alternating between falling and idle, and now I'm just idling over the edge. Okay. Wow. Um, let me look at a git diff just so I can get a handle on what all I just did because I got real confused at the end there. Okay, so here we are now passing in the max floor angle. Over in falling, we're setting the max floor angle to 75. We're still using a default of 45. We have a couple of two moves now, just the one. And then in falling, hmm, we made it be 25, but that really didn't help us. We're not falling, in, in walking. This is walking, right? Walking, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Let's 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 think about this. Let's think about this. So we have our player. I want the player to be able to easily walk up small slopes but not be able to go up big slopes. I want them to not slide down slopes when they are not walking. Um, I think. I'm a little concerned about that last one because what happens if you jump at a curved surface and don't quite make it? You should probably slide off. Although, no, I mean, I'd be fine with the player sticking as long as it was like underneath their jump height and was not totally vertical. Let's see what folks are saying. Yvonne Vaughn is unhappy they didn't come to do the jam. Yeah. I have probably too many projects to be doing a jam too, but... I don't know. I really wanted to do one. It's been a really long time. So, how how can we do this?
I'm gonna look at the player script again. What are we using this? We have this this ground ray cast. I forget what we're even using that for. Ground ray cast is being used to stop us from going into falling, I think. Um hmm, let me grep for it. Ground raycast. It's used in idle and walking. So idle. Where are we using this? Ground ground raycast. So if we are not on floor and the y velocity is less than one, meaning we're going down. Ensure we don't go into the falling state if we just get a teeny tiny bit of air from bumping into the environment. Um, this sounds like this should actually like prevent it. <laughs> if we're not on the floor and, the and we're going downward, and the ground ray cast is hitting, I wonder if, I wonder if we just use this same ray cast in the falling state to like decide that we're done falling. Um, you know, rather than just is host on floor or does that ground ray cast collide? Because we can still fall a little bit in idle, I think, can't we? We can still fall a little bit in idle uh, because of this check. We just need to like not go into the falling state all the time. Um, I'm going to wipe out some of the wacky code changes that I did here. Using the power of Git, we're going to keep uh, the debug stuff and we're going to wipe out the uh, things that I was messing around with, uh, move and slide with snap and, and the different floor max angles. Uh, so we're going to use this cool feature of git add, which is dash p. So I'm going to go to player, player gd. Here it will go through each chunk of the diff and ask us, um, do we want to keep that? And this looks weird. Why does this look weird? OK, so here's where I'm starting. All right, so this first thing, yes, keep that. Uh, this, yes, keep that. No, don't keep that. All right, let's look at some of these other changes. Um, the player TSCN, we want those changes. And um, let's see what remains. So this all looks like stuff we don't want to keep. So I will tell Git to discard that. And what remains will just be that debug label telling us what state we're in. So that looks good. Thank you, magical Git powers. Um, so what I'm thinking is we'll use this fall in the falling state. We're going to say, um, uh, well, I guess here we have to check the, the we have to force update this uh, ground raycast. So host ground raycast force raycast update. And then we're going to say if host is on floor or ground uh, host dot ground raycast is colliding. OK, so this would take us out of the falling state early if this really teeny tiny ray that's coming out of the bottom of the player uh, uh, collides, um, which may look weird, may not do what we want, but let's try it. So that looks good. That looks good. OK, so the animations are looking normal. Let's see if we slide. Whoa! Why did we slide that whole distance? What the heck? <laughs> and then we're sliding while idle? Why do we slide while idle? What? <laughs> what is happening?
Okay, let's go look. We're falling. Clearly we're falling at some kind of angle. We decide we're idle, but we don't stop our X and Y or X and Z motion. Let's add back a change that I had earlier. Say host velocity x equals zero, host velocity z equals zero. Let's see if that gets us where we want to be. So we still. <sighs> what is happening? How can idle be pushing us? <laughs> down the slope. I don't understand. I want to look at the player move. We're just doing this, the same stuff. We're using stop on slope always. <sighs> Ray too long? Maybe it could be too long. Why the majority of state machine implementation uses string as state? I use a num for this, avoiding typing errors faster. Long and num. <laughs> yeah, so I do I do use um a nums for uh state machines as well. So um there are actually two state machines at play here. We've only been looking at one. Um it's the player state machine, which uh is complex enough that I built it in this way where I have um, a node representing the state machine and then separate uh, nodes representing the individual states. So the states are nodes. Um, I don't think it makes sense to have an enum uh, mapping these states to the nodes. This is actually a relatively small state machine, by the way. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, six, six states, uh, which is real tiny. Uh, I did a platforming, a 2D platforming game which had like 14 states or something, and it was a game jam game, you know, it wasn't uh, very sophisticated. Uh, but once you reach a certain level of complexity, I just find this structure easier. I have another state machine uh, on the shovel, which is really just responsible for the um, animating the shovel. Uh, and it's simple enough that I, I made an enum describing each of the states and uh, just do basically like big match statements <laughs> to do this kind of uh, simple, simple state machine. Um, but yeah, state machines are one of those funny things that I feel like every developer makes their own uh, because everyone has uh, kind of these ideas about how they think state machines should work. So like I'm using a, a state machine add-on that I made because I tried a bunch of the other ones and I just didn't like the way they're doing things. Um, so I think probably a lot of personal preference <laughs> comes in uh, as far as state machines go. Hey, Aaron Winter, welcome to the stream. Uh, so, guys, anyone have any ideas why the heck my character is just sliding while in idle? Um, I mean, okay, what about this? Um, the Let's say the reason we are sliding is that the platform we're standing on is ever so slightly angled and because we're applying gravity we're just drifting down it um does that make sense um we're falling and then we're idle and then we're falling and then we're idle what if we say when we're in idle we just always kill all um x and z motion so we, we tried killing it in state enter. That did not work. Let's try killing it. Um, let's try killing it here. I don't know why that didn't work though. Like it feels like it should have worked. Anyway, let's try this. We'll just, well, every, every frame before applying the motion, we will kill the X and Y motion, which we can do because we have no acceleration or deceleration. If I was doing a game that had that, I couldn't do that because I would need the player to sort of decelerate. Although then we would have the resistance from the deceleration. <gasps> Ooh, okay. All right. So we didn't slide out of control there. That's one thing. Um, I don't like that we're falling at all, though. So 
the other change we added is pointing this ray down, and that should have kept us in idle. We're checking this ray. It should be hitting this. Maybe uh, the theory was the ray was too long. Maybe the ray is too short. Um, let's maybe make the ground ray a little bit longer. Go from point negative point two five to negative point three. He still idled down that. What if when we're idling we don't slide? So we're using move and slide. What if we just use move and move and collide? Um, just trying to see if this adds any other weirdness to our to our movement. Okay, I couldn't jump there for just no reason at all. I have I have this feeling that I'm going to try all these different movement things on stream and find that I've just made everything worse. <laughs> and after stream, decide uh, that I just want to remove it. So why couldn't I jump? Okay, now I'm able to jump just fine. Hmm. Is your state machine available all online somewhere? Yes, it is in the Godot asset library. It is the Snowpack state machine. Uh, what is the asset library? Asset library. Snowpack state machine. There it is. Uh, it's not really that interesting. Um, it just has, it's very small, has my personal preferences baked into it <laughs> but if you know if uh anyone's curious uh you can check it out if you want uh is the recovery code in physics the recovery code in physics pushes you outward along the normal surface and not back to where you came from <laughs> make your game be in winter time with with the frozen surface problem solved yeah um I mean, sliding is less of a problem than um, the being able to walk up on reasonable slopes, but it is still a problem because I think that's what's making it so the coyote time is misbehaving now that the world is so varied. Um, and I want to have the coyote time working. Okay. What if we do the thing I said where we, we turn on and off sliding um, and we say an idle, we just, we just don't slide an idle. We just don't slide an idle. Um, does that solve the coyote time problem though? So I think, I think what's happening with the coyote time problem is that we're going over these uneven terrain. And so the character's doing these little falls. Um, and we're getting, we're getting, um, slides from idle into a jump which doesn't give us coyote time, and we're getting falling when it's really just walking. Um, but let's try this. Let's see if this has some kind of effect. So we'll add a new argument here again. Uh, this will be slide equals true, and we'll say if slide, we call this, else we do move and collide, which I know has a different return value um, and different arguments entirely. Let's let's take a look at move and collide before I get too far into typing. Move and slide, move and collide. Moves the body along relative vector. The body will stop if it collides. Returns a kinematic collision which contains information about the collision when stopped or when touching another body along the motion. If test is true, the body does not move but would be collision information is given. Okay, so 
in this case, we don't get a velocity vector back. Um, I think we need to do our own thing where we clear out uh, velocity if there is a collision, but otherwise leave it leave it the same. So we'll say move and collide. Uh, if move and collide uh, velocity equals velocity, not velocity, vector 3, 0. And we're going to have the idle state turn this off, turn sliding off. Let's just see what that does, if anything. Whoa, I am sliding all the time in idle. I'm just sliding. I'm just sliding all over the place. Okay. That did not work. <laughs> um, okay. Let's look back at idle. I'm just going to get rid of this. Um, it's annoying having to constantly change that method. We're just going to do posting the velocity, move and or host dot move and slide. And we're going to do the host velocity vector three, vector three up, true. And we're going to go back to doing something with the max. Angle. So last time we cranked up the max floor angle when we were doing, um, we, we cranked up the max floor angle on the falling state. This time let's just crank it way up on the idle state. Uh, again, we'll try 75 degrees. And let's give that a shot. So, okay, what state were we in when we were sliding just there? We are sliding in idle. I just, want to, I just want to stop. I just want to stop. Um, hmm. See what folks are saying. Uh... Okay, wow, folks are saying a lot of things. Uh, have to do Snowbook Gems sometime soon. Be dying to try out the rollback library. Awesome, yeah, let me know when you try it out. Move the ray to the back. It may solve half the problem, or to the front. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. So right now it's directly below us. Um, and so maybe we want to have it on the back so we're kind of hanging onto the edge behind us, or forward so we're kind of catching... Uh, if the fall is is not that deep, uh, Aaron, you'll probably need to do a test move and collide rather than actually moving. And if the test returns true, set velocity to zero. Sliding is due to penetration recovery. Yeah, okay. So that makes sense. The penetration recovery happens no matter what. If our object has moved inside of another object, that has if even if I zero out velocity, it's still going to do that. Um, which means we could still have like a frame of recovery. And then, yeah, I saw further down, uh, the clean says, don't apply gravity to the idle state, which, uh, yeah, maybe we could do. Um, maybe we could do that. The idle state, like, does sometimes happen when you're not totally on the ground. 
Um, uh, you could set the max angle on move and slide differently. So the max angle that's on move and slide, but um, oh yeah, okay, DJ Kosher realized that. Times uh, never mind. Are you sure you are sliding an idle and it's not switching to fall and idle at the same time? Just want to say as a Oh, hey, I'm a new daily dopamine. Just want to say as a back-end dev, you game engineers blow my mind. <laughs> yeah, the, the math. There is way more math in game dev than pretty much a lot of other kinds of dev. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of kinds of other dev with math in it. but um, Okay, so because it's easy, let's try first just not applying gravity in idle. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be weird side effects to that, but let's try that. And then if that doesn't work, and it's probably not going to because, you know, the last 15 things haven't worked, um, we'll try Aaron Winter's idea of testing uh, the motion before doing it when in idle to ensure that we're not going to penetrate another collision shape when we move. So let's not apply gravity. Oops. Wrong type of comment. What time is it? Oh my god, we don't have very much time at all. Uh, my friends, our time is up in a few minutes, but let's see if we can't solve this right at the buzzer. Okay, so this actually is doing what I want it to do, that we're going idle, it goes idle falling, idle falling, idle falling, and we stop. That time we were falling the whole time when I would rather not have been falling. Um, what if well, why were we falling? Because we're now doing this ground cast, which is presumably hitting. So if on floor or is ground cast, maybe that relates to the clean's idea of moving the ray backward. Um, is moving the ray backward worth trying real quick before we do the test motion thing? Um, also, too, like falling, we do we do want to slide some. We just don't want to slide on these like angles that I feel like we shouldn't be sliding on. Um, so maybe this, okay, before we are playing around with, with cranking up the, the max uh, floor angle, let's, go, let's try that again, but on the falling state only. And, but no, even if we, we still should be detecting the ground because of this ray cast. I'm going to try moving the ray back. Let's, um, okay, let's orient myself here. So back is this way. I think I think this is yeah because we I can see I can see the shovel. Um, let's grab our ground ray cast. Let's just pull it back a little bit, maybe like that. I just don't see why that isn't working already, but whatever. Okay, so let's try. That might have worked. That might have worked, because we should have fallen that last bit. There was two little falls, but that seems right. We sort of fell over one ledge and then fell over another ledge. Uh, let's go find a steeper thing to slide down. At the top of this cave, there is... This sort of pile in the corner here. Let's see if we can't. We fell on the super steep part. It's not up here to slide. Guys, we wanna we might have fixed this. Let me uh, platform around a little bit and uh, get a feel for if the coyote time is back to working as it should. I feel like I should have jumped there. I should have jumped there. Hmm. 
All right, let me let me do that again. These trees might be a good place to test the the coyote time. And I just walked right up this uh, the side of this rock. Does that look like any part of that is 45 degrees? Like if the max floor angle, well, whatever. I'll have to figure out. Or maybe, maybe I need to adjust the capsule shape to make that work. Okay, yeah, I should have jumped there uh, and didn't for some reason. Just plain did not jump. Right here. I'm going to try to walk off on purpose. Uh, it's hard to time when I'm actually coyoting. Let's, uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to watch the state up in the corner there. And as soon as it changes to falling, I'm going to press jump. That worked. Um, I think we may have improved things. Um, let me try that test again. I don't know. One more time. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. Why are you not jumping? <laughs> See what the heck was that about? Or wait, is our jump state also checking this this ray? What what all is checking that ray? Um, no. Uh, let me find my grep here. Ground ray cast. So walking and falling are checking that ray, or because we just added falling. Walking and idle. Let's see what walking is doing with it. Yeah, okay, so we're checking the ray as far as deciding if we are falling or not, but we are uh, not checking it as far as deciding if we can jump or not, and that actually might be the problem. Um, or wait, we need to do this here, and we need to do this here is on floor and not or wait hang on if is jump and host is on floor and host ground or this okay and or on floor or recast is colliding and I saw that uh, the clean was saying something in there I will I'll check that out in a moment I'm going to go do these trees again real quick. If I can just jump around these trees like fluidly for a little while, um, I think that will be a really good sign. I, I don't know, guys. That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I totally walked off the tree before I jumped there, too. Whoa, what, what's happening? I'm soaring into the sky! Why am I soaring into the sky? <laughs> no! I was about to say, like, we solved it, but now I'm just floating. Why, why was I floating? <laughs> I, I don't even know how I would go about triggering that. Okay, if we are idle, we should, we should not be able to get some positive Y. Although I guess we aren't clearing it out. So let's say... 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna have to end it here. I think we're gonna have to end it with our, our levitation abilities. Let me see, let me see, um, let me see what uh, folks were saying at the end. And if there's some really good ideas, I will try them. Uh, otherwise, I, I suspect that I'm going to be fixing this later. A linear algebra machine go brr. May I ask what problem you're trying to solve is? So, yeah, uh, I'm trying to prevent the character from sliding in situations where I don't want them to slide. Basically, I, I don't want them to slide unless they are moving. If the character has stopped moving on a walkable surface, they should not slide. Um, sliding on 80 degree wall is perfectly fine. Looks like walkable until you get right up against it. Are you counting physics frames or process frames? I'm counting physics frames. I'm counting physics frames. Um, ooh, wow. We're hitting like the, the far plane of our camera's depth of field. And I, it's, pressing jump does nothing. Uh, but if I press forward, I should fall back to Earth. Oof, Oof is right. <laughs> Uh, how goes the stream today, Logan says? Did you see it? Did you see it? <laughs> oh, yeah, David. Uh, I did record those grunt noises myself. From Bull, welcome to the stream. <laughs> hey, Michael, I don't think I welcomed you to the stream yet. To infinity and beyond. Ah. <laughs> yeah, kill all velocity when entering idle is probably a good idea. Um... That may be the thing that's going wrong here, Dr. Revert. Um, so the idle state, we are killing this velocity before we are going, but maybe we start off when we first enter it, just go host velocity equals vector three, zero. I don't know. One last thing. One last thing to try. Because otherwise, this was feeling really good. I'm going to go back to my trees and see if I can't float into the air again. Yeah, I do not feel at all. Oops, well, I just completely missed the landing. But I do not feel at all like I'm uh, uh, losing a jump press or... Even that one, I really, really walked off. And we haven't floated up to the sky. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit the stuff that we worked on, not to the main branch, but to some other branch. And off stream, probably into the wee hours of the night, I'm going to be uh, trying to figure out what the heck is going on with our player movement. Player movement fixes see what we got all this stuff let's just add all of it we're gonna commit uh, attempts at player uh, at fixing at fixing player sliding down walking surfaces floor surfaces oops floor surfaces All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I uh, uh, we didn't solve all of our problems, but I think we had fun. Fun bugs, <laughs> crazy bugs are fun too. Um, I might try to stream, do an impromptu stream uh, between now and the end of the jam, um, but I might not, depending on how stressed out I am on trying to get stuff for the jam finished. Otherwise. Uh, Come join the Discord. We can hang out and chat, or I will see you guys uh, next week at the next stream. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Bye-bye. <laughs>